time plus, right? The, the actual ingredients that are part of uh, time plus. So could you talk through them and, and how they kind of fit into the, the strategy that you just talked about? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first ones that we've mentioned were the, the alpha lipoic acid and the rutin. So mm. they are trying to fix the factory. They are trying mm. to switch back on NAMPT so mm. that that enzyme can, you know, have a, a youthful efficiency for recycling NAD as it is used up. We also have an ingredient in there to try and inhibit some of the inflammation um, that is going on that is you know, unnecessarily using up large quantities of NAD. Uh, we have an ingredient in there, which is parsley powder. And the reason we have that in there is because it contains the active ingredient apigenin, which is an inhibitor of CD38, which is the main inflammatory process that degrades NAD. So just to put this into perspective, um, CD38 uses around 100 molecules of NAD for every one turn of, of its cycle. Um, things like DNA repair enzymes and sirtuins only use around three, three molecules. So it's a huge drain on our NAD supply if CD38 becomes overexpressed as we get older, which it does. So the yeah. idea behind uh, the apigenin is to, even if you can slightly inhibit CD38, so not like completely knock it out or anything, but even slightly inhibit it because it uses so much that will have an impact on NAD levels. And it's been demonstrated in, um, not in humans, but in mice, that, you know, just by inhibiting CD38 alone, you can really change and increase the levels of NAD in the cells, which demonstrates how much of a, a huge impact it has on NAD. And again, the reason we use parsley powder and not pure apigenin is for bioavailability. Um, apigenin, again, not, not the most stable, not the most absorbed, um, but it, using it in more of its natural form, the body can absorb it, it can be cleaved, and it can go off and do its job in the cell. So that is another one of the ingredients. Um, another one, talking about the pathway, and um, we've just been talking about um, methylation. So again, the other noticeable thing in the cells of, of older people, especially who um, have NAD dysfunction, is this increase in NNMT, um, the methylating enzyme. And what we don't want is a situation where we um, have a fully functional recycling pathway, but still we've got high levels of, um, of this methylation enzyme that are trying to grab all available nicotinamide and methylate and get rid of it. So we use an inhibitor of NNMT, which is EGCG, which is a compound that's found in green tea. Um, so that is what that is used for in our product. We also have nicotinamide in there. So we do put a precursor in as well. Um, so, uh, I, you know, the difference to a lot of precursor products is they just have a precursor, either nicotinamide, NR or NMN. We have a precursor, but we also have everything else that is trying to fix all of these other issues that we've discussed. Right. And so nicotinamide can go across cell walls, correct? Whereas like NR needs a transporter and NMN, there's a lot of discussion. Should exactly that. So, you know, that's a key question we get. Well, why, you know, if you put in a precursor in there, why don't you use NMN? Why don't you use NR? Mm. And for exactly that reason. So NR definitely needs transporters. There's also a lot of evidence to show that orally consumed NR actually gets metabolized um, in the liver to nicotinamide. Um, so mm. there's a big argument whether you're just using nicotinamide anyway. Um, NMN, again, you know, there's been transporters identified, but still a lot of debate on this, you know, studies showing it NMN may get converted to NR and then taken up. Um, but nicotinamide is the most well absorbed of all of them. Um, it is free to pass through um, cell membranes. And we also know that it is out of, you know, all the precursors, the one that we naturally use. We don't naturally prefer, our bodies don't naturally prefer to use NM, NMN or NR. 
like that's you know that's not something that's abundant in in nature mm. or something that uh, our bodies are, are usually using it's nicotinamide that the salvage pathway uses where all of our nad comes from with no issue at all when we're younger so that is exactly why we use nicotinamide uh, instead of any of the the other precursors would you think that most of the benefit benefit from time plus is coming from re salvaging the 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 nam that already exists in the cell or from the the extra nam that you're providing i think it's a it's a combination so we know mm. that some nicotinamide will create nad but we also know that any precursor given without affecting the root causes of the decline mm. is also going to have knock on knock on effects like mm. things that you do not want happening and um, which is a huge is why i have an issue of, of only using precursors because if you think about it if you use a precursor alone without fixing all these issues what you are doing is you are boosting nad now that's great initially but in a cell which doesn't have a functional salvage pathway then you are going to get the buildup of nicotinamide then the cell is going to be like oh my goodness we've got to try and deal with this. So then it starts changing other things by increasing methylation to get rid of it. The mm -hmm. other thing is that, is that NAD that you're providing actually going towards boosting positive mm -hmm. cellular processes? So we know that uh, if you um, put NAD in the cell, CD38 has a much higher affinity for NAD, which means that it will grab NAD before the sirtuins or their DNA repair enzymes or any of those other positive things that you want the NAD to be used for. So if you're not inhibiting CD38, then actually a lot of that NAD that you're giving to your cells in good faith um, is actually driving inflammation. And again, the studies now coming out to show that things like NMN do drive inflammation. Um, so I think what, what's important is that if you are trying to boost NAD, D, you, you're not ignoring all these other things that are going on. And that's exactly the approach that we take. We are trying to, you know, hit every other issue that that could be directing that NAD down the wrong pathway, or it could be, um, you know, driving inflammation, or it could be causing, causing methyl problems. And um, all the other ingredients in our product are like supporting that NAD production to not only make sure it increases, but also to make sure that it is to, you know, in the best going towards the best possible use when it's in the cells right yeah so one one interesting thing thing i saw was cd38 actually kind of increases inflammation i thought it was a marker of inflammation that it, it kind of existed when you had inflammation yeah so cd38 is um part of the innate immune system and um, you see it on a lot of macrophages and cells like that and basically it, it uses nad as its fuel so um, without NAD, it, it can't function. It, it basically cleaves the, the NAD. It produces something called CADPR. Um, and, and that goes on to activate multiple pathways that then drive the inflammatory process. Okay. So if we are going to take Nuchido, so uh, when should we take it? Does it? With food, without food, in the evening, does it matter? Yeah, so we we recommend taking with food. Um, uh, taking taking supplements on an empty stomach can make a lot of people feel a bit sick. Um, mm. you know, many people can't tolerate. So just in general, with supplements and with that product, we just say take it with food. Um, yeah, if you're someone that practices fasting, we say take it with the first meal that you have in the day. Um, it's actually six capsules and a lot of people go wow that's a lot um, but the reason it's six capsules is because that is actually the amount of raw material that you need mm. to make sure that by the time it gets to the cells that there's still enough there to do the actual job which again is a, something that hugely frustrates me with a lot of supplements and that the doses is, are just so small that it's it's pointless taking it because it doesn't actually mm. have enough um, bioavailability to, to perform its job um, so we recommend that you can split it into two dosages so like take three capsules and um, with your first meal three capsules with your second meal but you actually can take all six capsules all in one go and um, we've tested that both ways ideally with the first meal in the day and um, although it, it doesn't seem to affect the efficacy from what we've seen in the studies 